So in our family, we have a senior and junior in high school. So we've been really busy researching colleges and doing application and so on. And one of these things we have been working on is the common application, which is an application that you can submit to multiple colleges. And that's what's great about it. So you don't have to repeat yourself in the same applications over and over again versus you just put it all in one and you submit it to multiple colleges. And so far, most of the colleges we have been using have been um, using common application. There are some colleges, they also have additional applications or you have to go through their process, but majority of colleges do use it. So once you go to commonapp.org, you have to create an account. And I'm going to show you something that's really helpful that I found it really helpful as a family. There's actually different ways you can create an account. So you can create as a first year student, transfer student, which are students who are basically applying second time. So they have already completed some college and now they wanna go to new college or they're transferring or maybe doing a master and what have you. And then you have education professional and parents. And this is really helpful for parents. So for example, you can create an account as a parent and you will have an experience exactly how your student, your child is filling out the application. So it will have everything the same, the way it's set up as your student does but you won't be able to submit it. So this is not for students who apply. So, so in case you do start with a parent or adult account and then you realize you filled it out and now you can't submit it, you can actually send an email to app support at commonapp.net right here and you can provide your information and you can say, hey, we have used this practice account and we have all this information, but we actually wanna use it to submit the information and they'll be able to help you to change it. But you should really start with a student account. If that's what's going on, that's what you needed, if you're going to be submitting it. But I found it really helpful having the parent account so I can figure it out what kind of information will be needed for my um, children so I can help them fill it out. So I just logged into my account and I can see that this is a practice account because at the very top I have a practice account notice and then on the right next to my account it says practice account as, as well and otherwise you can't tell nothing is different when my son's account is identical everything is identical so even when you log in you actually when you log into your account you have to click on like let me show you when i go to common app and i click sign in the only option is first year student transfer student. So even though I have a practice account, I have to click first year student. However, I signed up and now put my practice account credentials. So this way you are really experiencing everything exactly how the student, how first year student is experiencing, but it is a practice account. So now let's just get to know the common application dashboard and how everything looks right now i'm you have these tabs at the very top dashboard my colleges common app college search and financial aid resources the dashboard right now is empty because i haven't filled anything out but this is where you will have information on deadlines if anything is missing in the application and so on now my colleges this will be a list of your colleges so right now we're just starting so i have no colleges there but once i add them they will be listed here now, common application, this is where we're going to be starting with all of our information and we're going to go all the sections. College search, this is where you search for college and I'll show you how to find them, not only by name, but by also using the filters to add them to your colleges. And finally, the last option is the financial aid resources. This is information about how to apply for the free application for federal student aid how to get money for colleges. So now let's go to common app. So this is the section we're going to be working with to kind of go over how to fill out. On the left, you have different sections and it says profile, family, education, testing, activities, writing, and courses. And each of them has subsections. So right now I'm in a profile and I can see that this is where I'm at because I have this blue mark on the left. Once I complete this whole section, I will have a green check mark next to it. But right now I'm just starting so nothing is filled. Now you can see that this profile section has also many subsections. So now in the profile I have to provide address, demographic, 
language and so on. So each of these has all these subsections. So let's start with profile. So you have to, you know, provide your information. So many times they will ask you questions that are either radio buttons like this, that you have to answer yes or no, or whatever options are listed. Now, whenever you have this red asterisk like this, that means it's required. So you have to fill it out. You can leave it blank, but you won't be able to submit the application until you provide the information. And the software is good enough that it will remind you. So you don't worry about if you don't have the information right at this moment, just leave it blank because the software will remind you to fill it out. Don't just put something there that's not accurate because then you will save that and you won't remember that you have to change something. Now, let's say we have these radio buttons and I, and I click on something and say no. And then I want to change it to yes. I can just change it. And once I change it, you can see that I'm actually getting more boxes and more information to fill depending on what I select. So if I put no, I have this many boxes. But if I put yes, then I have more information to fill. Let's say I want to clear it. The radio buttons, you can't clear it by just clicking on them, but you can clear them if you click the clear answer button at the bottom. I do need to put my last name. There's a red asterisk. If I leave it blank, it will give you sometimes an arrow on the left and says, please complete the required question. Now, then here you have to put your date of birth and with the date of birth or any kind of dates in a system, you can either enter it January like this, or if you don't want to put it like that, you can click on the calendar on the right. And now you can specify the year. So we can specify the year first, then you specify the month and then you specify the day and then you can save it. So you will have a lot of these questions, especially like for dates of your tests or dates of courses and so on. Then you click continue. And now when you continue, you can see that this subsection has been closed and another opened up. And now you have to put in your information. Let me show you how the address is being done because you will also have a lot of these places where you have to add, click on the add address button. And here you can, if it's not, by default, it might be United States, but if it's not, you can select it. Or if it's another country, you can select it as well. So let's me select United States. Now you can start typing the address. If I type some made up address like this, it will tell me I don't see my address in this list. So it's kind of like a correction for you. So to make sure that the address that you're providing can be actually found. So I'm going to put in some dummy address that I know actually exists and select it and then click continue. Then sometimes they ask for phone numbers. So the way to provide it, you just might want to select the number for your country and then you put in the phone number. Now, if you don't put it the entire phone number, it will know that it's not a correct 10 digit number. So you actually have to make sure you provide it correctly. Some of the time it will ask you a question and it has these check boxes. So not the radio buttons, the radio buttons, they have this clear answer underneath, but the check boxes, you can check them yourself and uncheck them if it's not correct. Then sometimes you can also have these radio buttons that give you options. Like they list one, two, three, four, five. And depending on the number you select, this many option will pop up for you to fill out. So for languages, let's say I'm going to say two languages. Now it's asking me provide the first language, let's say, and then say, do you speak it? Do you read it? Do you write it? So you can select it. And then another language you can select and you can say speak, read, write, and then it will not let me complete this section because I have to specify what's my first language, let's say. So I'm selecting it and then continue. Geography and nationality. So here is you specify your place of birth, city, citizen status, and then social security and so on. And out of places in the common application, you might have things you have to read and confirm, sign their disclosure information for you, you know, to make sure that you provide accurate information. So you have to read it and say, do you agree or not? You might see for application to specific colleges, 
if they're asking whether you qualify for in-state tuition. Now, for family section, first it's going to ask you about your birth parents, and then you can specify if your situation is different, maybe you have step-parents and so on. So let's say for, for birth parents, I'm going to mention this, and then asking you about one parent or the second parent with whom you have permanent home. Do you also have step-parents? So if you have step-parents, you want to say yes, and now how many step-parents you want to list? Let's say I want to list one step parent and now at the bottom i see that i have one step parent show up so you can fill out information about your step parents not just your birth parents another thing that's interesting here is also asking the occupation of your parent and then also the employment status and then it's also asking education level so if you specify okay let's say some trade school how many trade school were attended and let's say if you specify one you have to find it and Let's say if your parent is from another country, you can also specify it here by saying another country and then put the country name, let's say. And then the schools, the biggest school, the most known schools for that country will show up. And most likely that school or trade school, something small won't show up. So you can scroll down to the bottom and say, I don't see the college I'm looking for in this list. And once you select it and say continue, I, you have to put the address. If I don't, it will not let me move on. So I'm just going to go back, but you will have to find that information. And you continue and you do the same thing for the other parent and then step parent. And there's also a section for siblings. If you have any siblings, you want to put how many, their name and their age and continue. Once you fill out any of these sections right here, you have this option to preview. You can click preview. And this will kind of show you what you have filled out. I didn't fill out that much because this is an example. Sometimes having this preview is very helpful because you see all the information together and you can quickly check it to make sure everything is correct. You can also print this out, but I'm just going to cancel for now and continue. And now when I continue, you can see that I'm skipping and I don't have any check marks, green check marks, because I haven't filled out any information completely. So under education, you have to find your high school. So you can, by default, it's high school name, but it can be also, uh, you can search it by country. Let's say if you're coming from another country and filling out the common app, but I'm going to leave the high school name here and I'm going to just search for a high school I know, and then select it. I can select the high school that's, that I found, or if you homeschool, you also have that option. Or if you don't see your high school, you can list that here and you will have to provide the address information. I'm just going to select this high school and say continue. And now here you have to provide date of entry and we're going back to the calendar options. I can click the calendar, search for a year, month and and this is required i see that red asterisk if you attended more than one you can specify i have one more other school that i attended and you can provide that information here as well as why you change schools you can describe it maybe you moved your parents change jobs or what have you now if you have taken any college courses you can provide it as well and you have to find the the college that you took the courses maybe it's a community college you have dual credit courses you would list them there now grades this is an important section now it's going to ask you how big is your class so basically your high school your graduating class let's say it's 500 students you can say your class rank this section about the gpa it's very important so the GPA is a grade point average, basically measures your academic performance in your school, but there are two different ways how you report your GPA. So the GPA, the first one is GPA scale reporting. Basically, what's the GPA system that your school uses? And most school use out of four or five. So I'm going to say out of four. And here I have to provide my GPA. So let's say it's 3.5. Now 3.5, is this weighted or unweighted? So it matters because the weighted GPA system basically counts the more advanced and challenging subjects such as honors or AP classes. It assigns at a higher point average. So for example, you can have an A in AP course that may be worth five points out of four scale versus an A from a regular class would be counted as four. So it weights the harder classes higher. It reflects the greater difficulty of the course. An unweighted GPA, on the other hand, does not take into account the difficulty of the course. 
in unweighted GPA system, all courses count the same. So the A grade that you got in the AP course, it's four, and the A that you got in the regular course, it's also four. So some students, let's say if they take very hard courses, they might get Bs and Cs in these courses, but they're much harder. So their cumulative GPA, the unweighted, might be lower than their weighted. So I would put 3.5, let's say unweighted, but for weighted, it might be 3.9 because I got a lot of Bs in a very hard courses. So these Bs are weighted more. Now here you also have to provide the current or most recent courses. So your senior in high school, you want to put that information. So the courses that might not show up on your transcript, it won't show which grades or it won't show what courses you're still taking in spring semester if you're applying in the fall of this year. So you want to say how many classes you're still taking currently. And let's say it's five. Now, what kind of scheduling system your high school has? And most of them use semesters. And now you have to specify the information. So because I picked five, now I have five sections to fill out. So five courses I have to list. So first you say, okay, what course am I taking? You choose what kind of course you're taking. So let's say we're doing chemistry and then you put in the course name. Then you specify the course level. So you wanna say, is this an accelerated, regular, or some other kind, college prep, dual enrollment. So you select that. And then you wanna say, is this full year course or first semester? So I'm going to say full year. Then you do the same thing for all the other courses. So you wanna specify and provide the information of all the courses you're still taking in your senior year. Now under honors, this is where you can put in your academic achievement. You wanna put the best ones at the top. So I'm gonna say, yes, there's some honors. And when you scroll down at the bottom, you see how many you can list. You can list five honors. So let's say there's a, you had honor role and then you can specify which grade. So let's say junior year and sophomore year, you were on honor role. And then at what level of recognition? Is this a school honor or state or national? And then you can add another honor, let's say. And then let's say you're filling this out and you realize, wait a minute, I don't have another honor. You can delete that section by clicking this remove button and removing it. If you had anyone help you with your application process, if they have not, you just say zero. If they have, you can just say which organization helped you the most. And you can provide the information of the counselor, advisor, or mentor. Now, future plans, it's asking you basically at this point in time, what do you think you want to do in life? <laughs> the common end is just using it for their own stats, but it's not like you actually have to choose this as your major or anything like that. It's just out of interest, but obviously it would be nice to match to which programs you're applying to. So let's say we're going to, we're going to want to be a business owner, and then it's, it's asking you, how high do you think you want to go to college? Like, do you want to just do associate, bachelor, master's, business, MBA, and so on? And we just say, we're going to say bachelor for now. And we just start in college. So here about testing. So whenever you're taking the ACT, SATs, you have an option to send your scores to the schools directly. However, in Common App, you can also self-report this information. Here you can say, okay, which test do you want to report? And you can specify multiple, let's say SAT, ACT, and maybe AP subject tests. And once you specify, now you will have section for the tests you've chosen underneath to report it. International students, they can also specify that information here. And then for each of the tests, you want to say, Okay, did you take the ACT and how many times? If you have multiple, you can select it. Let's say we took it once and it's asking, have you taken the writing test? You can say yes or no. We can say no. And are you planning to retake the ACT? Let's say we do plan to retake it. So then you have to provide the date of your future test day. Let's say we're going to take January of 2023. Now, what's your actual score for the ACT and then you can say the composite score right now so we're going to specify here and when did you take this course so let's say we took it in October of 
2022. And then here you can specify your English score and the math score and then the dates of these tests. Then you do the same thing for SAT. You specify how many you took. Let's say we just took once. And did you do the essay? We can say yes or no. And if you plan on retaking it again, we say no. Now for the AP test, you can specify how many you took. Let's say we took two AP tests. Now, majority of colleges will give you credit if you receive three, four, or five as a score for your AP test. If you receive one or two, it might not be even a good idea to list them that you took these tests. You don't have to list them if they're not going to help you out. Now, you can say when you taken or plan to take the course. You could also be taking it in May of the senior year and then you can specify what subject and obviously in that situation there would not be a score yet. Now this section is an active is activities so this is where you want to put in information on any sports you've been participating, volunteering, your paid jobs, community engagement, anything. So you want to report anything you definitely want to if you were really busy engaging in many things. So some of the GPA, some of your courses might not reflect all the things you have done in high school. So this is to your benefit. Now, this is saying activity one. If you scroll down, it tells you that you have 10 slots so you can report 10 different activities. Let's go to an example. Let's say we're going to report athletic JV varsity sport. So you want to specify what kind of sport you have been doing and then what kind of position, let's say varsity runner and captain. And then what's the name? So let's say we participated high school and then want to describe it 150 characters. That's a couple of sentences, basically just overall what you have done. What's the what's the goal of this organization? I mean, obviously, this is high school sports, so it's pretty straightforward, but some of these other organizations you could have been engaging with may not be as known. So this is kind of a place for you to describe it. Now, which years of your high school you participated? So let's say we did in as a freshman and sophomore and junior. When did you participate in your high school during your freshman, sophomore and junior? Did you participate during school year? So this is a sport that's played in school. So let's say we say during school year, during school break, that would be like in the summer and time when you're off or all year long. So if it's a school sport, it's probably just during school year. But let's say if you were engaged in a club sport, it could be all year long and you would check that. Now, how many hours per week? So it's good for you to just calculate. So let's say if you engage in the sport, maybe you had practice of two hours after school and one hour before school. So we would say three, how many days a week? It would be five. So it's 15 hours, so you want to say how many hours. So let's say it's 15 hours per week. It might be different for you, 12, 10, depending. So you want to do the calculation. Now, the second question is asking, how many weeks did you spend per year doing that 15 hours per week? So if it's a high school sports, many of them are three months. So it's three months, how many weeks? Four, so it'd be like 12. If you did, let's say, club sport, it could be half a year. If this is an activity that you participate the entire year, let's say if it's 52 weeks out of the year or 50 or 40. So you want to say this right here, how many weeks per year you've participated. And are you intending on doing the same thing, participating in this activity in college? You can say yes. And then you can click add another activity and you do the same thing. And there's many different activities that you can participate in. So you want to make sure you go through this. You can also provide information on your work paid and you can say, you know, what you have done, when did you work. So if you were busy earning money to help your family out, you want to list that to get credit that that's why maybe your grades weren't as good as someone who didn't have to do that. And now we're going to the writing section. So here it's asking you, do you understand that some colleges may require personal essay? And you can put that, you can write this essay with Common App. Then there's also some colleges that don't require the personal essay, but you will have a choice to submit it even if it's not required. Do you understand that? And here it's going to say which colleges required or which don't. Right now it's not listing any colleges because we don't have any colleges in our common app yet. 
Then here are the prompts right now, and you can select whichever prompt you want to write about. And at the bottom, you have a section to put that essay in. Now, the maximum words counts is 650, so it's like four paragraph pretty much. And you want to write on this essay somewhere else, check your grammar, check your spelling before you copy it over here. And then you click continue. Now, you can also add some information about the COVID-19 pandemic, how it affected you, or any other information. If you say yes, it will ask you to provide another 650 writing section to provide more information about your situation. Now, the last section is courses and grades. And this basically lists if any colleges require you to self-report courses and grades. And right now, it's I don't have any colleges, so none of them require it. But once we add the colleges, they might require that information and will tell you which ones require it. Now let's do college search because we want to add some colleges to our My Colleges in My Common App, which is blank right now. So if you go to college search, here you can type in the name of the college. And once you find the college, you can click add the college. Now you can also search for colleges. Let's say you don't know many colleges yet, but you know you want to go to a college in your state. So you can specify your state. Let's say we're going to go in California and we can search by distance. We can also search for which terms you can apply to as well as deadlines. Let's say if you're doing this, it's January of 2023. Or another year, maybe some colleges already have deadline passed and it made no sense for you to even try to search for them and apply to them for this fall. But maybe for another fall you could. But right now I'm just going to say I want to find colleges that have deadlines no earlier than March 1st. So you can specify it. You can also specify application fee, writing requirement. If there's standardized test policy, maybe you want colleges with flexible or sometimes required, what have you. So you can specify it to kind of filter out some colleges. And then some also require letter of recommendations, others don't. So I, I want to say, I don't want colleges that require letters of recommendation. And it will ask you, you want to show the colleges? I'll say yes. And here are the 13 results. And I'm going to add these colleges, let's say, right there. And now if I go to my colleges, I will have them on the left listed. When I click on this arrow, in addition to all this common ad information that I filled out, I will have to fill out some more information. So for each of the college, you have first all this information, their contact information, phone number, email. You can click on the website and go to the website for that college. Then you have application deadlines and it tells you what kind of application deadlines you have. And then on top of it, for each of the college, there are additional questions that you have to answer. So you can see for this college, for example, there's a bunch of information that it's still asking me. And many times it's asking you for which term you want to apply, uh, what's the admission plan. So many times if it's too late, you won't have these early decision, early action plans. You might have a rolling admission only available and you have to go through it. And they might have additional writing section and they may also ask you about your criminal record and so on. Commanders and FERPA release authorization. So if you're going to plan on asking your teachers, counselor, coaches recommendation, you have to release authorization. So basically it's saying that this information will be released to the colleges. Or do you understand it? Now you have option of either waiving your rights to not read the recommendation or not waive your rights and only have access to them if you get accepted and enroll in the college. And here I can specify, do I waive my right or not? If I say no, some recommender might be hesitant on providing the recommendation. They might not be as truthful or some might not want to write. I mean, obviously, if you are selecting your professors, teacher, coaches to do the recommendation for you, you would think you're choosing people who will write a good recommendation for you. So that's why you may want to waive it because then colleges feel the recommendation is more truthful and honest. And then you want to sign it and date it and save and close. And then you can invite recommenders to send you recommendation to the colleges. So you would have who you want to invite, um, counselor, teacher, 
others, advisor. If you click on that, let's say, let's say teacher, then you provide their email address, subject, and all that information, and you send, it will be sent to them, and they'll be able to write their recommendation and send it through the Common App. Now, sometimes your school might also have other platforms that you can link to Common App. For example, our school is using school links, and that information can be combined with Common App, which is really helpful, so you don't have to fill out in two places. And now here, you would have an option to submit your application, but I can't right now because I'm missing all this information. I mean, this was just practice, so I didn't fill out everything. And then you just do the thing, same thing for other colleges. Now, there's also writing supplement needing for this college specifically. So you can see this one is requiring 18, 800 maximum words, minimum 500. So it depends on the colleges you've chose. Now, if I go to my dashboard right now, now I have the colleges listed and it says application in progress. And it also says if anything is due or if it's required, it's listing here and deadline if you approaching any deadlines, it will be here as well. Now, if I click application requirements, this is basically showing the grid for all my colleges. And this is really helpful. It will tell you, you know, where is the deadline? What's the deadline, the early decision deadline, rolling deadlines, what's the application fee? And you can scroll to the right and it will tell you if a personal essay is required or not. You will have a check mark. If there are any supplements like portfolios, for example, for maybe artists, it will be listed here as well. What's the test policy for each of the colleges? And then teacher recommendation, if they're required or not, it will be listed here. And you can also click this all colleges and this will have for many colleges. So 1,028 colleges information could be listed here. You can also download requirement grid. Now this requirement grid, it's not just for your colleges. You will download the 1,000 that we just viewed. You cannot just download the requirement grid for your colleges. I don't know. That's weird. I, I wish that was the case, but you can't. Now you can also click on financial aid resources. This is where I mentioned before. It get, gives you a link to the FASA application system, and this will be will need to be completed in order to receive financial aid for college. But this is basically the gist of filling out common application. So good luck and thanks so much for watching.